Robert Manfred is getting lit up like a Christmas tree on social media because baseball fans cannot believe that Manfred is trying to introduce a brand new rule called the Golden At Bat Rule, which essentially gives every team in baseball one free pinch hit per game. And I'm not talking about a pinch hitter from the bench. You can pinch hit a starter. You can go, hey, Francisco Lindor, I need you up in the ninth inning, even though you just rolled over in the eighth inning. You can do that. So we'll talk about that later on in the video because Hall of Famers like Roger Clemens and Chipper Jones, they've chimed in on that possible rule change. Uh, is this real? Aroldis Chapman is going to the Boston Red Sox? Yes, this is in fact real. Yankees fans are pointing and laughing at Red Sox fans right now. We'll get into that in a second. And some other former Yankee news, Kyle Higashioka, who was with the Padres last year, he's found himself another brand new team. And also Clay Holmes, the former Yankee closer, he wants to audition as a starter to get more money. And another Philly reliever who was an all-star last year, he wants to be a starter as well. So a lot of things could be changing in baseball over the next few months. This is MLB Recap. We post these news updates almost every single day. So if you want to stay up to date on the game of baseball, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. And don't forget that this series is brought to you by SeatGeek and Underdog Fantasy. Use code FUZZY. I do want to talk about that golden at-bat rule because it just, uh, it's getting me fired up. But before we do that, let's talk about some smaller things like the soon-to-be 37-year-old Aroldis Chapman heading to the Boston Red Sox in free agency. Now, here's a small little wrinkle for you guys. Aroldis Chapman was basically a Red Sox back in 2015 on paper. He was traded for Manuel Margot, who was a foreign prospect in the Red Sox organization back in 2015. The deal was essentially done. It was Margot and some other guy named Marco for Roldis Chapman. Well, the deal fell through because the Red Sox did their due diligence. They started asking questions and they discovered a Roldis Chapman's off the field situations. Um, I can't really go in depth as to what he's done off the field, but if you guys have followed baseball at all, you know Roldis Chapman, his moral compass is always pointing to the I'm going to do some stupid direction. So a lot of Red Sox fans are scratching their heads and thinking if it wasn't okay to trade for him in 2015, why is it okay to sign him going into 2025? And again, Yankees fans, they got bullied by Red Sox fans saying, hi, you employ a criminal. And now Yankees fans, the tables have turned and they're pointing back and laughing. Now, here's the thing to remember about the Boston Red Sox going forward. Liam Hendricks is on the roster. He missed all of 2024 with an arm injury. Again, he's going to be back. 2016 Rookie of the Year, Michael Fulmer. He was added and he's coming back from surgery as well. Kenley Jansen, in my opinion, is going to walk. So when you have Liam Hendricks, Michael Fulmer, and Aroldis Chapman all of a sudden inserted into a lineup over one offseason, that's pretty impressive. And I know Aroldis has done a lot of crazy just despicable things off the field in terms of his strikeout stuff it's all-time nasty you guys know that last season at 36 years old he threw the hardest pitch in major league baseball father time just cannot keep up with him he has a career 14.8 strikeouts per nine as a reliever he has almost 1300 strikeouts in 760 innings again that's mythical strikeout stuff but along with that comes the walks and the image issues, obviously. So if you're a Red Sox fan, like my editor, Pesky Talk, or just a casual fan, what do you make of the Red Sox nixing a trade a decade ago and then signing that same guy in present day. What do you make of that? Now, while we're on the subject of former Yankee relievers, I do want to talk about Clay Holmes as well as Michael King because Clay Holmes is trying to go the Michael King route. So if you guys don't remember, King was a disgusting reliever for the Yankees not too long ago. Then he became a starter to end the 2023 season. He was lights out and then he was insane in 2024. We saw just how high his ceiling was in the playoffs last year. Well, Clay Holmes, he's trying to get more money in free agency by essentially saying, hey, I could be a starter moving forward, and he's not the only reliever who was really good over the last few years to want a chance at being a starter. Jeff Hoffman of the Phillies, he was an all-star. He was a bum, like literally useless as a starting pitcher, but he's really figured out his pitch mix and what he really benefits from in terms of throwing a fastball here or an off-speed there. His tunneling has gotten better. Clay Holmes and Jeff Hoffman, they throw hard. They have some of the better nasty stuff in baseball, and because they're heading into free agency, they're trying to get more dollars by saying, hey, you guys can try me as a starter. I'm willing to do that. We know it worked for Michael King, another Philly reliever, Christopher Sanchez. If you guys don't remember, before he exploded onto the scene this year as a starter, he was a reliever. Seth Lugo almost won a Cy Young after being a Mets reliever for the longest time. Ronaldo Lopez, he was 
a demon for the Braves this year. You also have Jordan Hicks. You have a Ronel Blanco. Zach Littell had a 1.8 ERA, his final nine starts this year after having 63 games as a reliever for the Giants back in 2021. So it's not like we've never seen this before. It happens pretty often, and I feel like going forward, it's going to keep on happening. All right, guys, one small little topic before we get into the golden at-bat rule. Kyle Higashioka, another former Yankee, he is going to the Texas Rangers after having a very, very productive 2024 season with the Padres. The only reason why this is happening is because the 2023 All-Star and breakout catcher Jonah Heim, who also won a gold glove on top of being an All-Star, completely fell off offensively. He went from a 260 batting average with 18 home runs to a 220 batting average with 13 home runs. And the worst part was he didn't take his walks either. He went from a 320 on base to a 270 on base. He had a 72 OPS plus last year. That's horrific. Now, me personally, if I'm an opposing GM, I am now honing in on the 26-year-old. He's going to be 27 by the time 2025 rolls around, but I am honing in on Sam Huff. I want to turn Sam Huff into Joey Bart 2.0. We know that Joey Bart, he was a super prospect, then was a bust for the Giants, goes to the Pirates, and pops off. Sam Huff is a six foot four, six foot five monster who can catch. I mean, he's got a 113 OPS plus in his first 78 games in the big leagues, and he can't catch a break and get playing time. They give Higashioka the backup role after Jonah Heim. They're going to be a platoon situation. Trade Sam Huff. Free my man. And here we go. The moment that we've all been waiting for. Let's talk about the golden at-bat rule that Robert Manfred is trying to introduce. And when I say trying to, he's talking about it with owners right now. There are conversations happening about that rule. So for context, essentially, we all know what a pinch hit is, right? Where there's a guy, maybe it's a lefty-lefty matchup, and you want to go to a Brandon Geyer or someone that destroys lefties, you bring in a pinch hitter from the bench. Well, the golden at-bat would be every single team in baseball once per game gets a golden pinch it opportunity to have anyone you want come up and hit. And I don't know how that would work logistically. Like, let's say the bases are loaded and Shohei Otani is at third base because he singled or took a walk and then all of a sudden maybe it's Max Muncy versus a lefty and you want Otani in there now because he can hold his own against lefties. Would Max Muncy go to third base and then Otani and him and trade places? Would there be a ghost runner where you're like, hey, if there's a base hit, there's a ghost runner at third base, he's just going to score. Like you're playing with your friends in the backyard where there's ghost runners. I know that there's a ghost runner in Major League Baseball where you go to extra innings and there's a guy at second base. I mean, he's still technically there, standing there, but maybe this rule is, hey, there's no one there. Just come on in. Obviously, I'm being a little bit facetious because, come on, mate, like, this is a prototypical, let's be like other sports move. Now, on paper, I would understand why Robert Manfred wants Francisco Lindor at the dish of Game 7 in the 2016 World Series instead of Michael Martinez where he rolls over. But I could flip the switch and say maybe the Cubs bring in Super Soldier Schwarber who came back from injury out of nowhere and was an absolute behemoth that series. Maybe he has a grand slam in the seventh inning of that game before the rain delay and there's not even a rain delay or a question as to who's going to win Game 7. It was the Cubs all the way. So you can pick and play and say that would have really helped out in the past. Really? Realistically, it doesn't matter to have these conversations because this rule is never coming to baseball. I can almost promise you. Again, on paper, I can see why baseball wants to be like the other sports in terms of the idea that, hey, if you're a basketball fan and a Lakers fan and it's the deep playoffs, you can rely on LeBron to try and take you to the promised land. You can't do that in baseball if Otani rolled over in the eighth and his team is still down in the ninth. You just have to hope it goes the extras for him to get another at bat. So the whole idea of let's give our best player the ball or the puck when it matters the most. Again, that's what baseball is trying to mirror and replicate. Okay, but baseball is a one through nine sport. You get your chances and then you hand it off to the next person. It's not that hard to understand, Manfred. I get what you're trying to do and you, you think you're growing the game of baseball with this, but it's a gimmick. Let's not do that. We already have the runner on second. We've changed the pace of play, which I love. Let's, let's stay there.